on the sequence or the series we've been on for over a month plus now, the justice of God. Praise the Lord. The justice of God, our test, we all know our test, Hebrews 1, 1 to 3. Amen. At the course of this series, we've been able to establish some facts about the justice of God. Amen. One of his say, God's power is seen in the purging of our sin. Praise the Lord. It's one thing singular out of all the points that we've learned so far during this uh, um, justice of God. That the power of God is seen in the purging of our sin. Amen. Let's look at the screen. The Bible says, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners speak in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. The verse you say, Had in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Had in these last days spoken unto us by his son. And that us, the Bible is talking about, it's talking about you and me. It's talking about all of us. God is talking to us tonight. That's what the Bible says. He's talking to us by his son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Amen. You know, this scripture, each time I follow the Lord, read about this scripture, it points me to Genesis 1 verse 26. Verse 2, please. Go back to verse 2, please. Say, had in this last day spoken unto us by his son, whom he had appointed heir of all things. If you look at this scripture very clearly or closely and look at Genesis 1, 26, God in the garden of Eden or in the creation of the world, God created man, Adam, to be in dominion upon the earth, upon everything in the world. And if we are following our Father in the Lord closely, and you relate, we'll, we'll go there, please. Please, Genesis 1, 26. Just at the back of your mind, say, and God said, let us make man in our image. Amen. In our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the air. And in Hebrews 1, 2, the Bible says God has made God, Jesus Christ, to appoint him to be head of all things. So what that means is that when you look at the creation of Adam, the first Adam, you know we have two Adam. We have the first Adam as Adam, the guardian of Adam. We have the second Adam, which is who? Jesus Christ. Amen. So when Adam was created initially, he was created as God. There was nothing other than after God, you have man. So everything on earth was placed under the hands of Adam. He was in control over this world. Praise the Lord. I'm going somewhere. He said, in Hebrew verse, he said, Had in this last day spoken unto us by his son, whom he had appointed. Why did Christ came into view? Because the first Adam erred and fell short of the glory of God. Praise the Lord. So, in God's justice, or the justice of God, we should, where he merely had them fall in the Garden of Eden, in Genesis verse, chapter 33, from verse 6 downward, the fall of Adam came, immediately, God has to plan the thought of the survival, the salvation of mankind. So, from that view, he sent many servants, we call them servants, the prophets, they were servants of God. He sent different people entirely in the redemption of the world. But they could not do it. Praise the Lord. So here, in view of this scripture, the Bible says that who he appointed here of all things, by whom also he had made the world. What that means in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the world. The world was what? John 1, 1. In the beginning was the world. The world was with God. And the world was what? God. So, the Bible is not telling us by whom also he had made the world. It means before the creation of the world, Jesus was already in the existence. Praise the Lord. In the spirit realm. Did that take me to this point that when we talked about in when we talked about 
John 1, 29. How that John said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Praise the Lord. Which sin did Jesus Christ actually take away? Which of the sin of the world? And what is the sin of Adam? Praise the Lord. The sin of disobedience. We're going to see some few things about that tonight. Praise the Lord. So, by who, verse 3, please. Say, so, who being the brightness of his glory, according to our father, they saw the effulgence of God. Amen. And the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin. So, our sin, we are not supposed to be talking about sin or preach about sin. What we are supposed to be preaching about is the love of God. Sin is no longer in record. Sin is no longer in view of God. What is in view of God is what Christ has done. Praise the Lord. And if what this scripture says, when he has by himself poured our sin, sat down on the right hand of God, of the majesty on high. It means everything has been settled. When he said on the cross that it is finished. And the Bible says in, in John 6:12, if I'm if I'm if if if, if I'm if I'm correct, that he that the son is set free is free indeed. But why is that human beings or we we are still having the challenge to believe that the sin of the world, if my sin has been forgiven? Praise the Lord. If my sin has not been forgiven, is it Rahab? The woman that said that, the, that, that Joshua sent the spies for in Jericho, she was what? A harlot, a prostitute. But she was the only person that was saved out of the whole Jericho. So if we have to call, or if it is this uh, modern day dispensation, we would have said that that woman is what? Not righteous. But in the eyes of God, we are all righteous because Jesus had dealt with sin already. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to see that Genesis chapter 3, verse 6 to 12. The fall of Adam. The fall, the fall of Adam that he has given his authority to Satan. So God was looking for a way to regain back that authority from Satan back to man. Because man has really has given his authority, leads it to Satan for a certain time on the place of the earth. Praise the Lord. But Look, I said, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did it and gave also to her husband with her and he did it. And if we check the previous verse, verse 2, the instruction not to eat that tree was given to who? Was given to Adam. Eve was not there. But now Eve was convinced, and he, she ate, and as well gave to the husband. But if you check, why the Bible the scholars said that man is a free moral agent, is that we have our right to decide our left from our right. We can choose what we want to do. God will not push you to do what you don't want to do. He gives you that free moral morals to decide what you want. Amen. So that is why you see that. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they so thick lived together and made themselves aprons. That's verse. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden of Eden. For the first time, they heard the voice of the Lord, and they've been there for years, together, cohabiting. Amen. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Next verse. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Amen. Watch closely. Who, who, who ate the fruit first? The woman. And he gave to the husband. They both eat. But when God came to ask why they do, he called on who? Adam, why did he call on Adam? Because Adam was the one he gave the instructions to, not Eve. Amen. He said, because, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden when God was asking, where are thou? Amen. And I was afraid. 
what sin brought to mankind is what? Fear. And that's why the Bible always talked about that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of boldness and of a sound mind. Immediately Adam commits that sin, this fear was the first thing that gripped him. Praise the Lord. Fear came into him. So because I was afraid, because I was naked and I healed myself. Before now, they've been there fall along. They never knew if they were naked or not. Amen. But they were just living their life. Because obedience, disobedience was not set into place then. When the disobedience set into place, they now realize because the tree that God asked them not to eat was what? The tree of what? Knowledge. And what? Amen. Tree of right from wrong. You'll be able to know your right from your wrong. You'll be able to take decision for yourself. Amen. So before then, they were in control. God was in charge of over their activities, over their life, over everything they were doing. Until the day they ate that fruit. Amen. And he first time, and he said, Who told thee that, that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree? Whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest eat. Amen. It's just a simple instruction. All you need to do is to what? Obey what God has said. But they disobey. But in this, our time, people see disobedience as normality. Amen. They see it as normality that it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. You ask somebody or you ask some church member come to church, they don't feel like relaxed at all. It's normal. Amen. It's not normal. The word says, Has thou eaten? And the man said, The woman, please, the, the previous verse, please. Verse 11. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest eat? Have you eaten the tree that I asked you not to eat? Amen. So Adam was trying to justify himself. And the man said that the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Praise the Lord. We all know the rest of the story. So this is where the problem of mankind or sins originated from. And when we talked about God, Jesus Christ taking away in John 1.29, the sin of the world. Amen. This is the place Jesus was addressing. Because immediately Adam took this fig tree and they ate it and they disobeyed God. They sinned no disobedience. There was separation between the spirit of God and man. Amen. Because before then, the spirit of God was in, in Adam, was the one that was being active in the life of Adam. And when Adam was giving names to everything in the world, the spirit of God was with him. Praise the Lord. That's why he was able to relate everything we are calling, or whatsoever things today on earth, all the animals and all the trees on earth. Adam was the one that gave the names because the spirit was with him. But when he fell, that spirit departed from him and it was empty. He was just so, and his body and his spirit alone. The spirit of God was not involved there. Praise the Lord. And that took us to Romans 5 verse 17. Because we have to really understand the justice of God, how that God really say, okay, now, since Adam has committed this, what will I do to regain back that man? Because God so loved you. God so loved man. God so cherished man. God, so, you are, the Bible said that we are the express image of God. We are like him. We are his representative here on earth. Whatever God wants on earth is a man. There is no other thing. Of all the creation of God on earth, body, animals, and every other thing, man was single out. Amen. Dominion was given to him to be in charge over this earth, to till the ground, to be able to multiply everything God has created. And the thinking of God is in that man that is with Jesus, that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. How God thinks is still the same way that man thinks when he was original, originally created until he falls. That was what changed the equation. That was what changed everything about man. Praise the Lord. In Romans 5, 7, it says, For if by one man's offense, we are talking about the justice of God, it was the offense of one man that brought sin to the world, that brought death to the world. Amen. The death, and what is death physically? Separation of the body and from the soul. Physical death. 
When the soul leaves a man, that man is dead. No breath again. So in the spiritual realm, the death of man is when the spirit of God leaves a man. You are just empty. Amen. So the Bible is saying that if by one man's offense, death reign by one, much more, they which receive abundance of grace of the gifts of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. But we still have challenges with this scripture day in, day out. People still not believe that the sin Adam has committed has been dealt with. Jesus has settled that sin. And we cannot function originally as God has created us. Praise the Lord. So what we should be telling people that our sin nature has been dealt with. And if we check everybody that Jesus Christ has used or God has used in the Bible, we see that it's not all of them that are righteous. And who is, who is even righteous? Without the righteousness of God. Without grace of God given to us. Who is righteous? There's no one was righteous. Nobody was righteous. Until Christ came, died and paid the penalty and gave us righteousness as a gift. Because righteousness is what? It's a gift that has been given to us by Christ Jesus. Amen. God himself gave it to us through his son. So we still have the challenge to believe that the sin of the world has been dealt with. So what is the sin? The sin of disobedience that Adam committed. Amen. So we've been back to the original state. The sin or the, the, the grace of God, the gift of righteousness, has been reigning in our life. Praise the Lord. So we should be able to tell people that sin is no longer in existence. It has been abolished over 2,000 years ago. Amen. In verse 19, please. Verse 19. So, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. How can one man's sin become all our sin? Amen. Let me use myself. For example, my father commits sin. You said that the sin is my sin. Amen. So, this was the problem when God said there has to be what second Adam to take care of this particular thing that many were made sin because of one man. After that, Jesus Christ died. All those things were abolished. There was no longer sin of my father or sin of whoever that would now rob my life. No. I've been made free. I'm a new creature born in Christ Jesus. Amen. Says, so, by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So, I've been made righteous. You have been made right, righteous. All of us seated here, we've been made righteous. The whole world has been made righteous. Amen. But he still gave us what? That particular free moral agent. As a free moral agent, he gave us that right to choose. Either to believe in Jesus Christ, to receive Jesus Christ, to accept Jesus Christ, to come into this grace of the gift of righteousness. Praise the Lord. So, we've all been given that free gift of righteousness. So, all we need to do is just to accept it. Just to assimilate it. Just to have it in our, in our mind, in our inner being, that I have been made righteous by Christ Jesus. Amen. We've all been made righteous by Christ Jesus. So, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ paid for the sin of Adam and sin and for the world. He paid for the sin of Adam. It's not my sin that actually God, Jesus Christ, came to pay for. Not my sin. Amen. It's that sin, that business that him and Satan dealt with in that Matthew 4. Amen. But let's go to Matthew 4. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Let's read from verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Next verse. Then the devil took care of him. Oh, we all know this story. Praise the Lord. We all know this story, right? So it was a temptation. But yeah, Jesus, the devil was telling Jesus that it, 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 the, the, the power of this word, everything about this word was given to him by one man who? Adam. Amen. But Jesus understood that his mission was to take that authority back from Satan and to give it back to us. Hallelujah. So we are still talking about the justice of God. The justice of God is that we all should know, like our Father the Lord will always say, 
that God is not partial. God is not partial. He's not so righteous. Your righteousness will not attract God more than my righteousness. No matter how you pray, no matter how you serve God, God is not partial. It's equal what right he has given to everybody. And that right he has given to anybody is the only thing that made you to understand it more better than me is that you have more knowledge than myself. The more you have the knowledge and the revelation of the word of God, you now understand what Christ has done for you. Amen. And that is why that God is not partial. He doesn't love the Christians and hate Muslims. He created everybody. What the Muslim needs now is the word of God. And who we preach that word to the Muslim is you and I. That's why he said we should study to show ourselves approved. I tell you, there are people right now that are learning outside languages. They are learning their language what, for the purpose of what? To preach the gospel to the Muslims because they don't hear about the word of God. What they need to hear is the word of God. They want to hear about Jesus Christ. And who we preach to them. That is why most of the time, when we are related to them, we don't see them mostly as unbelievers. Amen. It tells in order for you to see that Christian Muslims, they are not unbelievers. Because who is an unbeliever? An unbeliever is someone that has not heard about Christ. Most of them have not heard. And as I'm tell, talking to you now, many of them have been converted to Christians. It did not. A whole lot of work is going on underground to ensure that those Muslims, they receive Jesus. And people are taking upon themselves to learn outside language. Amen. Just to preach the word of God to them. They need to have this Jesus that we are enjoying. That we have already had. Amen. Because many of us would not think that this person, or you see somebody on the way, he does, he's not your, uh, the same denomination. You may have been thinking that that person is an unbeliever. No, he's not. But you have the responsibility to preach to that person, to preach the good news to the person, preach Jesus Christ to the person, and make the person understand what Jesus Christ has done for us. Amen. Because many of the Muslims have been converted to Christians. While some Christians have been converted to what? Muslims. It's vice versa. Amen. That's why the Bible, the Bible is, uh, Jesus, uh, God is not partial in all that he does. Amen. He made sure, but that's why Jesus Christ said that the world will not come to an end until this gospel is preached to the end of the world. So if you want the world to come to an end, take this gospel and run with it. Go to the people that you know that they've not heard about Christ and preach to them. Amen. So that is part of the justice of God. We should not discriminate any human being. That this one is a believer, or is a Christian, this one is not a Christian, we not discriminate. No. Let's relate with them. Amen. That's why John 3, 16 talked about, for God so loved the world. He didn't say, for God so loved the Christians. It's the world. And who are the world? Both Muslim and what? Christian, Hindus, Buddhism, and all the Buddhists. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to see Hebrews 10, verse 17. Hebrews 10, 17. And the Bible says, And there are sins and iniquities will I remember no more. This God is still talking. That our sin, our iniquity, our trans uh, trespasses, our transgressors, everything that has been contrary to, the, to God, the Bible says God said he will not remember anything. And that is what God still stands on till tomorrow. Amen. Nothing like sin anymore. When Jesus Christ died, he was buried and he resurrected and he was glorified by God. Everything that has to do with sin has been what? Dead to it. And God said he will never, ever remember anything called sin again. Amen. So the fact people are still seeing conscious is that they've not really understand the knowledge about what Christ has done. Until you understand that Christ has dealt with this particular thing called sin, you will know that we are living in pure righteousness. What you need to do is to allow that righteousness in you to radiate. You know, let it permeate people around you. Let that love of Christ in you. Let people see it in your character. Let people see it in your action. Let people see it in your words. Let people see that, yes, you are a true one, pray Christian. Because the Bible says they call them Christian. Why did they call them Christian? Because they are what Christ-like. 
they were doing as Jesus Christ was doing. But if as Christians we are doing contrary, and don't, I don't believe that people or the unbeliever around you will be able to embrace Christ. But until we take our stand and let that life of Christ to radiate out of our life, praise the Lord. So how would it radiate out of our life? Is that we stand on the word of God. Stand and be able to dispose the love that Christ has put in us. Because it's only that love that can weaken even the wicked man to turn his heart to say, the God you are serving is the God I will serve. To say, whatever, wherever you go is where I will go. Because if we are not reflecting, if that love of God is not reflecting in our life, it's assumed that all the unbeliever will look at us and see that we are still living in sin. Amen. Praise the Lord. So your sin we will not remember anymore. Amen. That still took us to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. So, for he had made him to be sin for us. Jesus was not a sinner. Was never a sinner. Well, there was no dot of sin in the life of Jesus Christ. But the Bible says God made Christ a sinner for us. Who knew no sin? If God should call any one of us here, say, okay, this brother is a sinner. Come and take the place of this brother. Give him your righteousness. Take upon your life the sin of this brother. Who will do that amongst us? There is nobody. There was only one person. Only one being that said, I will take that place. He was, with all gladness, with all joy, he happily accepted the responsibility to take our sin upon himself. Use it as a garment and wore it upon itself. Amen. That we might be made righteous. In, we might be made righteous. The righteousness of God in him. He do that because of me. He do that because of you. He do that because of all of us. Amen. Jesus take every pain. He take every sorrow. He take everything that we would have gone through and take it upon himself and gave us freely the gift of righteousness that will be made righteous through him. Amen. So that's why you should boldly say to your neighbor, you have been made righteous. Say so to your neighbor, you've been made righteous. The gift of righteousness has been given to you. It's a gift, a free gift that God has given to us. We, if we are to buy righteousness, there's nobody here that can afford it. I tell you the truth. There's nobody seated here that can afford righteousness if we are to buy it. But God gave it freely. He gave it to you for free. And that is why you see that in the acts of God, when we say God is not partial, he looks at everybody, he sees us as one. But when you realize and see that God is your savior, is your redeemer, he has given you everything you need on earth. You have to stand tall. Praise the Lord. I want to relate that to how we live our life, our daily life, our actions, and our thoughts. Because everything we do in life is start from our thoughts. Amen. So, we must have this at the back of our mind that somebody have taken the place and have given all that gift to be righteous in God. Amen. So, what, whatever we are doing in our daily activities, let this particular character reflect in us, especially in our world. Because the Bible said, that are snared by the words of your mouth. Whatever we say, you say as a Christian, people will take it against you. Whatever you say, that's why if you want to say something, you don't just say things anyhow as a Christian. If you understand what Christ has done, by one man's sin, sin enter into the world, and by one man's obedience, righteousness came into the world. Before Adam was on earth, whatsoever Adam professed out of his mouth, come into obey. Amen. But God wants us to understand that authority he, has, he gave to Adam then. That authority has been given to us. And that's why as Christians, we don't curse. Amen. You don't curse. Because if you believe who you are and know who you are in Christ Jesus, 
every word you profess out of your mouth is powerful. Amen. It has power. It has potential to do whatever you set it for to do. That word that God said that as the heaven is far from the earth, so are my ways far from your ways. So are his thoughts far from our thoughts. Amen. So that talk God is talking about, immediately that second Corinthians 5, 17 come into play that if any man be in Christ, a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That day you have taken and confessed Jesus Christ. That authority has been given to us. You don't, don't talk anyhow. Your life is molded by what you say. You see how some people are wallowing in ignorance, in, in poverty. Is out of what they say or what they talk, they keep in their hearts. Amen. And if you declare to yourself that I cannot be poor, if you declare to yourself and believe in what in that statement you made, I believe you and I bet you that you can never ever be poor in your life. And how many of us know that poverty is not actually the physical cash? It's your what? Thought. Your mentality. What you have bought inside of you, that is what becomes of you. There are some people, they don't even have a time. But the way they package their life and they live their life, see that they have billions in their account. That's why we should work tall when we know that the righteousness of God has been given to us. Amen. We stand tall. Say, ah, if I have God, somebody has, or perhaps you are related to the governor of this state, how would you behave? How your thoughts alone will change. Your thinking alone will change. Your actions alone will change. Your behavior will change just because you are what somehow identified with what the governor. What about Christ? What about Jesus? What about God? Who has created that single man, the governor of this state? But it's just that the problem we have is that we have not really understand our rights and privilege in Christ. If we do whatever we think or propose in our heart, it will always come to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. So God is not partial. The justice of God, there's no partiality. The justice of God, he sees everybody as what? One. But one thing is certain that Jesus Christ has given to us, is the golden rule or the golden law, that we should what? Love our neighbor as ourselves. So anything that you wish anybody to do to you, do it same to another person. Whatever you don't desire for yourself, anybody to do to you, don't do it to what? Another person. That's just a simple, lively life of Christ. That's why you see that in Acts of the Apostles, how that the Apostles, they live their life while they were on earth. Amen. They were what together. They love one another. They cherish each other. They gather together. They eat together. They play together. They pray together. They preach the word of God together. And they perform the same miracle that Christ did on earth. Amen. So God sent all of us forth to go out and showcase that character of his to the world. Amen. To replicate that character of his to the world. To be able to tell anybody that is undergoing any stress in life, all we need have for our brothers out there is just an encouragement. Is there anybody that is downcasted? If you are opportune to close to anyone, just believe that God has placed you to console that person. And to leave that person out of that dungeon of bondage that he's living in. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So the justice of God has made all of us equal before him. That's why a child that is born today and an old man that is about to die, we have equal rights. A child born today and two days later the child died, where is he going to? Amen. He's a righteous being. He knows nothing. A man that is dying on bed and he knows Christ, where is that man going to? He's going to heaven straight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because God is not discriminating that you are old or you are young. Like one uh, man of God said that never you cry for someone that just died maybe at the age of 30, 40, 50, or 20, 15. Death is death. But we all know that some deaths are not actually when some people are supposed to leave the world. Amen. But at the time, that is why the Bible says we should pray always. When we pray, God will direct us. 
Some of the misfortunes that some people experience are actually what out of ignorance of the leading of the Spirit. Amen. So, in just of God, the promise that God made to Jesus before Jesus Christ came to the earth is that the promise of the Spirit. Amen. Was the promise of the Spirit. After Adam uh, committed that sin, the Spirit was taken out of him or of the world. Then, when God sent Christ to the world, He promised him after that you've been exalted, that same Spirit will be what? Giving back to man. Let's see that in Luke 24, verse 29, the promise of the Spirit. So all that Christ came to do, he didn't just come to the earth and no run from the earth from right to left, from end to from the from beginning to the end. But he did that for an agreement with God. Amen. He said, Behold, verse 49, please. 49, not 39. He said, And behold, I send thee, send the promise of my father upon you, that ye tarry in the city of Jerusalem until ye be a word and deal with the power from on high. Amen. He said, Behold, I say indeed the promise of the Father. So what is the promise of the Father? It is the Spirit of God. So that's why every believer have that Spirit of God in them. And when that Spirit is in you as you accept Jesus Christ, you are a different species entirely. pass. Amen. So it has been given to us. As believers, we have this promise. And that is why we can be able to speak in tongues. And all the prophets and all the apostles that were sent before us, none of them was able to speak in tongues. But after that, Jesus Christ was resurrected and was glorified to the glory of God, this spirit was given to us. The twelve or the apostles, we are the first that receive of this spirit. But at the time, this thing, Nazareth what you know, they started sharing it, laying hands on people. They were receiving the same spirit. And until it get to every one of us. And we too, we also pass it to the unborn children that are coming. Amen. That spirit has been given to us. We have the free gift of God, which is the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor you have the spirit of God. Yes, I have the spirit of God. I just have a few minutes to round up. I have the spirit of God. It is the promise between God and Jesus Christ. After that, he will be glorified. That spirit will be released to us, will be given to us, that we can be able to function originally as God has created you and I. Praise the Lord. So as I remember in Hebrew, in John 10.10, 10, the Bible says, still it is the justice of God in John 10.10, 10, he said, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life. The life was given to every one of us. That they might have it more abundantly. This is the justice of God. That we all that are seated before him, or even those that were not here today, or those that have not received, received Christ yet, this has been given to us, the life of God. That we will have it what? more and more abundantly. Amen. I will pray that this life of God will continue to grow in our life in the name of Jesus. They are not seen on earth. We are not on earth by mistake. Amen. Neither are you here in Vifey Church by mistake. Neither are you here in this service tonight by mistake. Amen. We are all here for what? A purpose. And that purpose will be fulfilled in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. So, if you ask me today, I will, ask, I will say that God's power is sin in purging of our sin. That the sin of Adam, the disobedience of the, the sin of disobedience has been what? Dealt with. It's no longer in view to us, towards us. Amen. It has been settled. Sin has been settled. Amen. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ have settled everything that has to do with what? Sin. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's why Jesus Christ could boldly say that I have come that they may have life and have it what more abundantly. Amen. So I think with this is my little exhortation tonight. As we step out from this 
hot tonight in our various areas, in our home, in our offices. Let that life of Christ radiate in our hearts. Let's learn to speak always. Whatever I will find ourselves, speak the word of God, the good news that sin has been dealt with. Even poverty is a sin. For you to, be poor, to become poor is a sin. It has been dealt with. And God has given us that righteousness. It is only in us coming into that full realization that all those things have been dealt with. We are now living in that fullness of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we come to a close of this session. Uh, 